Hello and welcome back. This is episode 15 of my vlog series about creating the art for a 2D video game. And today's episode is going to be all about creating a space or a home for your character. So if you've watched any of my videos of the last number of weeks and you've seen any of the actual gameplay footage, then you may have noticed this sour old man that we have just like wandering around in the background, and that, that is Garth. Um, I think I've introduced him a couple of times in other episodes, but if this is your first time viewing, Garth is a sour old man who lives in your kingdom, but he has a very important role. So Garth has been taking care of your land for years and years, for generations, and um, so he is your steward. And he also acts as sort of the tutorial character for the player, you know, tells you how to do, you know, how to play, how to do uh, everything. And so he has been just there in the background, you know, wandering around your property, but we figured it was high time that Garth got a house of his own. So that's what I am working on today. So I feel like there are a lot of artists out there who really enjoy character design. It seems to be a really common favorite. And it's not really hard to see why. It's a lot of fun to take a character and try to find visual ways to suggest that character's personality, their background, and their preferences, and all of that can be a really fun design challenge. But that being said, I feel like although a lot of artists really like character design, a lot of them really do not like environment design, or they, they don't like doing backgrounds, they don't like doing settings, you know, that sort of thing I feel like a lot of artists really struggle with. And in my experience, I feel like they're actually really not that dissimilar. So, for instance, Garth, who is not on the screen yet, but I think he will be later. I'm designing some furnishings for his house, and I think I pull him up so that I can make sure that uh, his bed and, and desk and other things are in scale to him. But when you see him, you know, you will see his, his design hopefully kind of suggests the kind of person that he is. Um, uh, within the constraints, you know, of the, of the art style that I've chosen for this game. So, of course, our characters are like, they're very simple. I mean, they don't even have noses. Like I said, they're very simple. They're about half head, half body. And from the distance that you view them when you're playing, you're really not seeing a bunch of teeny tiny little details. So anything that you include in your character design has to be able to be read from a pretty good distance away. So for Garth, uh, and for all of the characters, it comes down to shape in a lot of instances. And so for Garth, for example, his head is basically sort of a rounded block <laughs> because I thought he's a little, you know, uh, he's probably got a good heart, so I didn't do like it super angular, but at the same time, he's a little rough around the edges, a little hard to get to know, so I think that his head is, that blocky shape of his head sort of suggests that. It's like very square. Same thing, you know, he's got these very deep set eyes. He's one of the only characters I've applied really heavy shadows, you know, around his eyes. He's got these deep set eyes, got these really heavy eyebrows. And then, of course, his mustache just forms a great big frown, you know, on his face. <laughs> so even from a distance, you can always see that he's scowling. That's very, very important to his design. And as far as his clothes go, I figured he's a guy with some pride. You know, his family has been tending these lands for generations. I figured he would dress in a clean, sort of respectable manner. So he's got, you know, his nice vest, he's got his white shirt with his sleeves rolled up, and of course he's got a cane because he's older and has, uh, you know, and has a harder time getting around. But, you know, at the same time, it's a red cane and it matches his scarf and it's just all very smart and coordinated. Um, so all of those things, you know, kind of suggest what kind of a person Garth is, and I needed to reflect that same thing in his home. So we imagined Garth, of course, living on the property, but did not imagine, imagine him living in the palace. We figured that, you know, Garth's family's been tending these lands for generations, and I figured it was probably a good chance that he's been living in the same home, you know, that his family has had for generations. And it's not because he couldn't live somewhere nicer, couldn't request a nicer house or move into the palace or whatever. He just has a lot of pride in his family's heritage. So, um, that being said, I designed this lovely shack for him <laughs> at the corner of the property. And we decided that that was very fitting for him, that he, we imagined him living in some shack, you know, on the corner of the property where his family has been for a long time. 
And of course, you know, to show the age of this building, I mean, for one thing, the design of it is slightly different than any other buildings on the property. It doesn't have any of the plaster, doesn't have any of the stone. I wanted it to look like a homestead, you know, something that when his forefathers showed up here, they, they built it kind of on the spot, and that's just where he's been forever. And so it's just built out of timbers, um, just stacked up like a log cabin. And of course on the roof, we've got a nice healthy crop of moss growing there that has just been um, you know, a flourishing for, like I said, generations. <laughs> and I figured that gave you a good, you know, good um, idea of the age of this home. And I also wanted to show that maybe he has some, you know, he has some pride in this family home. And so I included this wagon wheel off to the side, which is just a small detail, but I thought, you know what, if his family showed up here, you know, years and years ago, maybe they came by wagon with the clothes on their back, and it's possible that he would have kept, you know, a relic from, from that time. Maybe it's this is one of the wheels off of the wagon. And beyond that, too, I also wanted to show, you know, a little bit about his personality, his, um, his interests, and, of course, his, uh, his preferences. And I thought, you know, a guy like Garth, probably, who doesn't really like people, he probably enjoys a lot of like solitary sort of hobbies. Um, and so one of those things I thought, he's definitely, he's got to be a fisherman, like no doubt. And so I added some fishing gear there off to the side of the house. And it's, you know, it's small and it's definitely not a first read. You'd really have to be looking for it, I think, even to really notice it. But I put a pair of boots there, you know, nice waterproof boots. There's a little fishing pole and like his his uh, bait bucket there and they're just kind of hidden off to the side but they're somewhere that's easily accessible so you would imagine that it's something he actually uses a lot. Beyond that too, um, another nice solitary hobby is um, gardening and I thought that you know what even though he lives on like a working farm like Garth's the kind of guy who like I said he has his pride he is the kind of guy who would grow his own little vegetable patch and I don't really imagine him growing anything too tasty, though. Like, that seems like he would see that as, like, frivolity or something. <laughs> so I made these garden boxes, and I was like, what are some, like, really boring vegetables he could grow? So cabbages, totally tasteless. Onions, like, that one's sort of self-explanatory. And then I've got, like, this vine back there, and I imagine it growing, like, beans or something. Just, like very um sort of you know staple kind of foods nothing nothing too rich nothing too indulgent not that too many vegetables are indulgent but he's not the kind of guy who's gonna grow strawberries he's gonna grow onions so by now i've moved on obviously and have been working on the uh, furnishings for Garth's house, but a lot of the same thought processes apply. You know, what kind of things would Garth have in his house? And that's one of my tips that I have if you're trying to design a space for your character, is to think about what that person would have, not necessarily what you would have. And I think that's a really common trap to fall into. So when we're designing a space, we would want to design a space that we would like. You know, we want to draw um, furniture that we find really appealing or decorations that we think are super cool, something that we would save on Pinterest. But when you're designing for somebody else, you have to think about what they would like. And so, of course, I was thinking about Garth and I thought, well, he probably has, um, if the house is made of timbers, chances are this bed frame, I mean, one of the first things you would want if you moved into a new house was a bed. So this bed maybe has been here almost as long as the house. So I just made it, you know, very rustic out of logs. And that quilt, of course, just looks like old. It's a patchwork quilt and it's like no bright colors. Everything's very subdued. And while I, I don't know if this happens to anyone else, but sometimes why I, while I'm drawing things, I can smell them. Like if I'm drawing a steak, I can smell a steak. And while I was drawing this quilt, I could smell my grandma's linen closet. Like I kid you not. And that was the inspiration. The smell of that linen closet was largely the inspiration for Garth's bedspread. And of course, you know, what else would he have in his house? Well, he needs a source of heat. But I thought, well, would he have an open fireplace? That seems a little bit grand. He would probably want something that serves more than one function. Um, so, like, whereas in the hovels for the peasants, the peasants have these um, potbelly stoves, but they're, you know, exclusively for heat because you prepare all their food for them and they go to the larder to get the food. And they all there's the outdoor kitchen, you know, where you assign your peasants to work. But Garth, like I said, he's got his pride, and I imagine him having a very 
um, a very limited palette. He's very, I think, kind of one of these guys who's very set in his ways. He likes familiar foods. He likes eating the same thing all the time. He likes preparing it himself because he knows how he likes it. And so I thought, okay, so rather than just like a potbelly stove, let's do like a cooktop wood stove where, you know, it provides heat and a little bit of light, but it also gives him a surface to cook on. And so he's got his cast iron skillet on there and his tongs, and that's where he prepares all of his food. And I considered giving him a table like to sit at, but I thought, again, you know, he's a very, um, he's a sort of logical kind of guy, you know, doesn't believe in a lot of like frivolity. So I thought anything he has has got to serve like more than one function, especially because his house is so small. So he probably doesn't have enough room to have like a table and a, like a desk. And so I thought, well, he can sit and eat at his desk. That makes sense. You know, he only needs the one chair. There's no reason to have like a whole table for one person. So he's got a desk where he can sit and eat, he can sit and read, and it serves more than one purpose for him. And of course I thought, well, there's windows on the outside of the house. He needs to have a window um, on the inside of the house, but like I said, Garth doesn't like people, so let's put curtains on that window and keep them closed. So that's what we did. So anybody looking from the outside, it just looks black on the inside, and he doesn't have to look at anyone unless he wants to. So that was the design behind the window. And then I thought, well, you know, Garth's not the kind of guy who's going to hang up paintings or photographs or, uh, you know, mementos. I don't see him. He's not super sentimental. Um, and so, but what, you know, you would think he would have something maybe on his walls. I mean, he would definitely try and use his vertical space to some extent. So what's important to Garth? Well, fishing. We've established that fishing is important to Garth. And so his one decoration is this hideous fish on his wall. And like I said before, you are not designing for yourself. You're designing for your character. I would not put a dead fish on my wall if you paid me, but Garth would because he caught it himself and went to the trouble of having it taxidermied. So there it is in his place of honor right there on his wall. So hopefully that gives you some insights into the thought processes you can go through when you're designing a space for your character. And that doesn't have to be a whole house. It could be, you know, your character's bedroom. It could even be, you know, just like their school locker or, um, you know, their what vehicle do they drive? I mean, the, a lot of the same thought processes that you go through to design a character, you know, thinking about their personality, their preferences, their tastes, their background, all of those same things will go into what your character chooses to surround himself or herself with. And so hopefully by watching this, maybe it gives you some ideas that you can apply um, for your character and environment designs. And so here in just a second, I'm going to pull up the game and you can actually see what Garth's house looks like uh, up and running. So I will see you over there in just a second. Okay, here we are. We are back in my kingdom, and it is about 6.20 in the morning, and Garth should be emerging any second now. Waking up. There he is. Hey, Garth, how are you, buddy? We love this curmudgeon so much. So anyway, like I said, here is his house. So here's that little shack you just saw me make and his little garden boxes. Of course, he's living up here at the far top of the property. And if we go inside, you can see his cozy little space. So it's not very big. And I think I mentioned in my last video, I think my last video was the tavern, I want to say it was. Um, we actually did take that bearskin rug from the tavern and made a copy of it to go in Garth's house because it just kind of warms it up a little bit and fills the space a little better. But as you can see, this is actually, it's quite a cozy little area. He's got his bed, he's got his windows, which are fully blacked out so nobody can see in, his prized fish, and his stove. So there you have it. That was, uh, that is Garth's house. So thank you for joining me again and for tuning in for another episode of this vlog series. I will be back next Friday with episode 16. And until then, I hope you have a great week.